Welcome to Subramani. Uh, one question which keeps coming up in very many forums uh, is, uh, do I need a financial advisor? Do we need a financial advisor? And uh, if we do need a financial advisor, what is his role? So I'm trying to combine both these questions into this and say, uh, what is the role of a financial advisor and uh, whether you need one? Of course, whether you need one is a question which you have to answer yourself. But uh, I'm just assuming that uh, this will answer a lot of those uh, doubts in your mind. And not very many good answers are available online, though of course some of it is available. And it is a very important question to answer today because a uh, lot of options are available for uh, clients. You can go to a place where you can buy a ready-made portfolio. You can follow a big investor and copy his portfolio. Like a lot of these things you can do. What you should do depends on whether you understand the role of a uh, advisor. So, first of all, let us lay, take the limited role which 99% uh, of uh, people think an advisor should do. Or when a website or a person who is not connected much with the market tells you that you don't need an advisor, you can go direct and uh, you can invest. This is what they assume that the investment advisor should do. Uh, identifying suitable funds, <coughs> sorry, determining the share of uh, each fund uh, in that, determining when to timing of the market, uh, facilitating the buying and selling and uh, providing statements, capital gain statements, etc and uh, performance analyzing and monitoring and doing some kind of tax planning right this is what people think the role of an advisor is and uh, i would think this is true when i say advisor i say not only mutual fund advisor they expect this from an equity advisor they expect this from an insurance advisor etc broadly this is what they expect but from an equity advisor you don't expect too much of tax planning because there's no such uh, thing but here in this context tax planning to them means uh, knowing that uh, whether you will get atc benefit or no that's all and atc today i think is insignificant because people's incomes have gone up and uh, school expenses are uh, sky high so anybody with one or two children has one and a half lakhs just for that apart from housing emi pf etc so atc has become quite insignificant but i'm a, i'm saying that this is what if this is what you understand by the role of an advisor it is fairly obvious that this can be reasonably eliminated especially if you think that the advisor is as useless as you are for regarding market timing right so uh, advisor can't do market timing advisor can't do much of predicting which fund will do well in future he can do an analysis and say oh this fund which i recommended is now five star or say oh this five star fund is what i'm recommending and now it has become three star two star one star or minus one star whatever the ratings are today but uh, there are other ways to look at what the role of an advisor should be so here in this case an advisor becomes more like a guru or a guide so he performs the role of saraswati in telling you from where you can get a lot of uh, information data etc then he becomes a Hanuman that he holds your hand and takes you to your journey. So he works with you to discover uh, what are your personal financial goals, right? Uh, goal based investing is what uh, my book is. So he sits with you and uh, tells you your goals. What are your goals which are achievable, which are not achievable, right? He assesses your financial situation as of today. If you go and tell him that you have a finger pain, he'll not treat your finger pain. Like a physician, he will say, I want a full health report, right? I don't know whether this finger pain is because of a hole in the heart or because it is just finger pain because you did something yesterday, right? So to know that you, he needs to know exactly where you stand, which means your current balance sheet, your goal statement, which is a route map to where you are going and your budget saying how much you are going to earn, how much you are going to spend and coming to three documents, your uh, P&L, your balance sheet and your cash flow, right? So a guy who is capable of making all these uh, statements or asking you to make these statements or asking you and your wife together make these statements and give you separate statements. So why do I need separate cash flow for the husband and separate cash flow for the wife and a combined cash flow is to know if the wife gets uh, pregnant and takes a three year vacation, uh, sorry, three year break from her job. Uh, will 
the husband be able to manage all those expenses etc with just his cash flow so i need uh, husband's cash flow i need wife's cash flow and i need a combined cash flow i need all these documents from where i start right after this even though investment is uh, generic i need to make a customized plan for you your plan is your plan you cannot do a cut copy paste and give it to your brother right so i know two brothers one who spends 1500 per month on electricity and one who spends 17000 brothers staying in two different cities completely different lifestyle right so you cannot do a cut copy paste and give it to somebody else so that doesn't happen after this the financial advisor screens the best service providers in terms of where should these statements be kept and what should be done which is the best fund to which is the most suitable fund is this a person who would touch the money then he can be put in uh, he can put some money into a flexi cap fund for uh, you know for uh, his retirement but is he a person who if he is a guy who will touch the money then it should be into a retirement plan which gets logged in if he is a guy who is disciplined enough it can be in a flexi cap right so these kind of subtle changes which happen person to person uh, there can be a large cap uh, fund which is focused with 30 shares and there can be a large cap fund with 80 shares so choosing to give the father the 80 share portfolio and to choose and to choose to give the son a 30 share portfolio both being large cap fund that is the decision of the financial advisor as to suitability of the product products remain the same across 40 fund houses so having then also done some kind of a due diligence on the fund house and the fund manager and saying okay these are seven eight funds where from where you have to pick up and you have to pick up two from here three from here and creating that uh, portfolio making sure that uh, the funds are performing as per their mandate and not getting greater returns by changing the mandate now of course sebi has legislated uh, that funds have to be true to label but once upon a time it was very easy to pick up funds which were true to label and there were very few which were true to label so just picking up that was very easy then more after that you monitor the service providers if it's good you keep them if it's bad you throw them out you make sure that the charges are reasonable uh, then also provide guidance and education to the investor and his family making sure that his 14 year old daughter is making the right choices etc right right from education to everything recommending books recommending blogs recommending sites for them to read ensuring that the financial planning happens happens in the office of the uh, financial advisor so that the husband wife and the children come there they understand the process which is being done remember you are creating wealth for the family you are not creating wealth for yourself so your whole family has to be uh, involved in this he should uh, he should uh, be very happy when you meet your goals he should also feel the pain when uh, funds get locked in for some time and you can't retrieve it right or there are losses which happen all this will happen you put money in china fund and the japan fund as well you put money in japan fund and china the fund as well all these things will happen or you put into a fund of funds and you find that a indian small cap fund is doing twice as well as the fund of funds so these kind of comparative uh, misery will happen you know, his neighbor may have put money in a pms and make money you may have suggested don't touch fndo and his brother in law could make money in fndo so that kind of a feedback is going to come to you you have to handle all that so the financial advisor is some kind of a general practitioner right he has to understand that when a person comes to you from the way he's walking way he's talking where he has invested what mess he has made so if you are a gp for the family then you know how the father behaved or the grandfather behaved you know that so when you are dealing with an 18 year old you can tell the kid look i've been dealing with your family for the last 20 30 years so i know the dna of the family when he does all this then he understands taxation so he explains how clubbing works how it doesn't work how uh, you can gift assets to your 18 year old son and avoid clubbing when he gets into that when he uh, helps you with the documentation he part law is a part lawyer because he is telling you how to make the will please understand lawyers 
are not capable of making the will without the help of a financial consultant right if you go to a lawyer he'll say oh you have one daughter so give it here no but the financial advisor may know that your mother is dependent on you that you have your uh, math teacher whom you are sending 2000 rupees a month all this has to be incorporated right so the role of a financial advisor is far more complex than what people want to believe is replaceable with uh, technology some of it is not people keep forgetting that technology has helped us uh, implement quickly so if i tell you put into xyz mutual fund it is very easy all you have to do is click a button and put it into that but why has that fund has been chosen for you why a different fund has been chosen for your brother a different one for your father and completely different one for your uh, 23 year old daughter who is just qualified why what is the logic explaining all that is important so after 4 5 years technically when you have interacted well with your uh, investment uh, your client technically if he is a very smart guy he may not need you right he may need you as an expert so he will not leave you and go just because he thinks ah now i know everything right that feeling he should get but he should also realize that you are adding the last 10% when he came to you on day 1 you were adding 90% then slowly it became 80 70 60 now you are adding the last crucial bit of say 15 or 10% and uh, he's happy with the hand holding that you have given you warned him against uh, making mistakes he came to you with a 2 and a half crore net worth saying i want to put 50 lakhs in a pms scheme which was real estate and you said no you know uh, the question is how do you say it in the beginning of the relationship you say no sir this is expensive etc afterward you say boss teri aukad nahi hai to isme nahi dal sakta hai so that communication the way you talk everything changes then the family realizes that you are not just there to uh, invest money you are beyond that you can give them advice on where to study what to do what education to do all those things you start then you are part of the family then you get invited to the weddings then your phone number is saved by your name it is not saved as a raddiwala right raddiwala's phone number is saved as raddiwala financial advisor's number if it is stored as financial advisor it's not a great thing it has to be stored by your name right it has to say uh i'm sparsh and uh, i mean the financial advisor's name is not stored as financial advisor it is stored as sparsh right so these kind of things have to happen and this happens only when you build the relationship over a period of time now try replacing such an advisor it is impossible right so it is very difficult you can't use just technology to say ah i have replaced this guy Yes it is possible that tech will do some of the things but who will handhold the guy when the markets are falling who has made the uh, client so brave that he calls you and says oh markets are falling i want to put more money you have given him all that so yes at some stage some client may pretend oh now i know everything that's fine let him go there is no let her go it doesn't matter but these are all the services that a financial advisor provides now comes to the fees how does he want to charge you so he could charge you a flat fee but is he going to do all this work for 10000 rupees a year i doubt whether if he is capable of doing all this he is not 10000 it is more like 30 40000 rupees right he is a guy who is telling you what to buy what to sell what share to buy he is advising you on direct equity right so it's a multi faceted role he is a banker he is your lawyer he is your uh, uh, go to guy for anything financial whether to take a credit card not to take a credit card term insurance for everything is your go to guy he is able to hand hold you and your daughter and your father during uh, difficult times why is he going to do it for uh, 12500 or 10000 or does uh, or do you think sebi will be able to regulate the quality of advice from this guy so this guy could be charging 1 lakh per year or 1 and a half lakh per year 8000 rupees a month doesn't look very expensive especially if you have a big portfolio i would think so if a guy is giving this kind of service which is a 360 degree view on what is happening in your life he is not going to come cheap he is going to be expensive and the real good guys are not adding clients just what they are doing is saying i am sitting at the top and there will be others who are helping you he creates an environment where you can go to somebody junior he will do all your uh, initial paid work of creating all those documents summarize and then take you to the big boss 
and uh, design the plan for you. Yes, you, you need that kind of combination. So, which means it has to be a big organization, right? It has to have somebody doing research. It has to have somebody who is talking to you, interacting with you, creating your documents, creating your goals, right? So, somebody who is doing the paid work and somebody who is doing the thinking work separately, who is analyzing which fund, why, how, <coughs> matching the two and creating a customized plan for you. This combination of services cannot be available very cheap. Yes, something can be available where you say, ah, yeah, buy this, buy this, buy this kind of a thing where that guy doesn't even understand that switching from one scheme to another scheme involves capital gains tax. I have seen clients suffer because of such advice. So these things happen. Secondly, don't listen to people who are capable of doing it themselves. If you want to listen to them, find out whether you have the same level of capability. If you don't have the same level of capability, then you are not. And the amount of time that is available. Are you a full-time sales head of a pharma company? You will not have the time to do this. Don't fool yourself into believing that one hour on a weekend and you will be able to do it. You will not be able to do it. It requires a tremendous amount of diligence. And if you are a financial services CXO, I can be 100% sure that you will not do it because this is what you do for a day-to-day -day living, whether you are a fund manager or whether you are a sales head, right? So a fund manager who is very well qualified may not know that he has to make his will because real estate can't work with just nomination as to why this is necessary. That is the job of a financial advisor. Is the financial advisor a lawyer? No, but he's a hint of a lawyer. He knows what to talk to the lawyer. So you don't take your, uh, if suppose you're identified with a big illness, it is not as though your GP can treat you, but he can find out that you have that illness, then he can refer you to an expert. So when an IFA says, I can make your will, it just means he's downloading something from Google and giving it to you. Horrible, don't do that. You need a smart lawyer who knows what all to incorporate. And if you think you need a lawyer like that, then go to a lawyer. But take your uh, IFA or your chartered accountant along, right? You need this combination of services. See what you need and according to that, you decide whether you need an advisor or no. It's a very comprehensive uh, video. Therefore, I think it's be some 16, 17 minutes. Sorry, bear with me. Thank you.